Welcome to stage eight, our final stage of Deepest Darken. Um, Deepest Darken. Deepest Dungeon. So, welcome back. This is our little program, a little tutorial series. We're learning to program an object oriented programming in Python by creating a text based adventure game. So stage eight, so so far we have made our rooms, we have linked our rooms together, we can move around the rooms, we've got our characters, we can interact with the characters, we have got items that are in the room that we can pick up, we can put it in our backpack, if we use the right item against the right enemy, we can kill that enemy and we can win the game. So the game's all functional, you can just let it go and run like that, you can play as much as you want. So what we're just going to do today is just a couple, a little bit of tidying up and a little bit of thing about usability to make the game a little bit easier for people to play. So what are those things that we're doing in particular? So first off, we're going to set up a help command so people know what the actual functions are. Um, growing up, having played these text-based um, adventures, there's nothing more frustrating than typing a command in that you think will work, but you don't know that it will work, um, and you keep getting told that, no, that's not one of the options. So we need to be able to tell people what their actual options are, what they can actually do. We're gonna prove the user interface a little bit. We're gonna have a farewell message. We're gonna fix up some of the encode commenting. We're going to remove any unused code that we've got in there and we're going to tidy up the white space. So all this part down the bottom here, the first three are about improving the actual experience, the user experience, the XP. Um, and down the bottom here is about improving the readability of the code for other people um, if they ever want to read a code or for yourself if you want to come back in you know, a couple of months time and try to remember what on earth you have just done. So let's have a look, let's fire up funny and look at what we're gonna do. So first off, let's talk about actually improving this by putting in a help command. So at the moment, we just have down the bottom here, if they keep saying the wrong thing, it just, in else it just says, I don't understand, which is really frustrating. Um, for if you think that you need to, um, you come into a room, you see an item and you wanna pick that item up and see so you say pick up, and it says, I don't understand, you know, get, I don't understand. You don't know what the actual commands are. Um, we know because we programmed it, but a player wouldn't know. And it's very easy to make the mistake of assuming that someone will understand um, because, um, yeah, as I said, we all know what it is. So we need to put a help command in here. So I'm going to, first off, we're gonna leave a little message. You're gonna change this message. Instead of saying, I don't understand, we're gonna say instead, um, you're gonna change it to say, Enter help um, for a list of commands. All right, so I'm just gonna put that in there. Enter help for a list of commands. Cool, now I need to actually put help in as one of our possible options. So I'm gonna say, I like putting all this stuff before the quit, because I like leaving quit be our second last command. Um, LF command equals help. Um, then what we're gonna do is we are going to print now I'm just going to cut and paste this in because it is rather late at night and I don't feel like typing all of that in and you don't want to watch me type all of that in. But basically it says help, then it's going to print up which direction do you wish to move or use one of these commands. Type which direction you want to move or be going to commands, talk, fight, hug, take or backpack. So now they know what all the possible commands are. So we've got to help things set up there. So let's have a look. And that was the first thing we're going to do is put a help command. And then we need to improve the UI. How are we going to improve the UI? Well, at the moment when we run it, it gets really quite messy. Okay, I'm going to, did I put that cool here? So I'm just going to run this. Oh, um, yeah. oh actually, I better close that off. That's better. Save, right, run. Okay, so if I sit there and say um, south, right, that all really moves fairly quickly, right? Especially if I come into a situation here where I say fight, um, dog, you don't have, right, you didn't show you. It all really happens very quickly. So what I want to do is to have it pause at the end of each of your commands before the next room happens. So you type something in, it reads up what it says, because you see if we said, again, if I run here, and if I say south, right, there hasn't been much here, but if I now go east, and if I say hug, right, uh, uh, this here, Nigel hugs you back. All of this kind of races up and scrolls it up across the top, and you can't see what the response is. Well, you don't notice, so you've got to go looking for it. So let's make it a little bit more obvious. And the way we're going to do that is by adding the classic any key. 
Rightio, so we're going to come down to the end of our loop. So this is where we've got all of our commands, it's done all this stuff, it's done all the reactions. Our event handler has picked up the event of typing stuff in and to send the commands off in the appropriate place here. And now at the end of that, I'm going to put another input command, which isn't going to actually access anything. It's not going to record any or um, save any kind of response, but what it is going to do is it's going to pause the cursor and wait for the user to hit the continue um, hit the enter key because when we type in um, commands to our um, input we have to type the actual content and then press enter for it to accept it so it's just going to sit there and you can type whatever you want doesn't matter as long as soon as you hit the enter it's going to move past that and go to back to the beginning of the loop and describe the room etc so I'm just going to save that. I'm going to run it again. And this time, if I go south, right here, press any key to count. Yep, right. You're in the armory. Da, 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 da. So if I say hug, I can see that Eugene doesn't want to hug me before it then describes what the next room is like. Okay, so it just pauses, gives you a chance, the, the user a chance to read it. So that's our little improvement we're going to make of the UI. I'm not sure if there's too much more we want to add in around here. You can play a bit around. If you find that maybe um, there's you want a bit more space in here, you can sit there and say in the armory. And the great thing is that you can just change. I'm going to quit first. But, um, oh, yep. Enter key, right. So you're in the armory, the walls are lined with the racks, da, 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 da. So you might want an actual space here after the armory. Um, or, so let's just come back to, but if they want to put those in, you can put those in the description of, of change of describe. You can just by putting a, you're in the armory, da, 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 da. Uh, if the self is not, da, 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 to the direction is, you can put like little, backslash n, return carriages, which put blank lines in there. So you can fix it up however you want to make it easier to read if you think it might be easier to read to do all those. Right, what is the next thing we need to do? Next thing we need to put a little farewell message. So let's just put damn thing down the bottom here. Now this is gonna be outside of our loop. This is gonna happen after, after we've exited. So after we've exited here, we're going to, we've either either died or we have won. And as a result, we uh, they've turned um, running to false and we've exited our loop. So right down at the very end here, the little message is saying print. And again, I'm gonna cut and paste it. Thank you for playing Darkest Dungeon. Radio. Um, although it should be deepest because that's what we're actually calling it. So, thank you for playing Deepest Dungeon. Okay, so I'm going to say that. That's now done. Right, so that's all the little UI changes we're going to make. Um, that's all the different changes we're going to make to the actual game. The game's now finished. What we're just going to do now is tidy up a bit of the code. So first off, coming up here, using our comments in. So there's a, there's a few things we need to do. First off, we need to encode comment, and we need to remove unused code, and we need to put the white space in. So I don't know if there's any unused code. If I've, Oh, here's some. So you see the stuff that I've, I've commented out here? Well, I don't need that anymore. That was just in there to do some testing before. So I'm just going to delete that, and it's going to need, need that up. And you may find other areas where we've commented, um, commented out code. I don't think there's any in there either. And I don't think there's any in here. So just checking through if there's anything that we've commented out so we don't have to worry about running it. But it's all it's all pretty clear there. So that's that's taken care of that. What's the next thing I want to do? I want to remove and I want to put the encode comment in and fix it up a bit. So and I've actually done a pretty good job doing this. So I've explained this is the creating the rooms. Um, in here we need to link the rooms together. This is creating the characters, this is add characters to the room. Um, this is here I'm creating the items and I'm adding items to the room. I'm initializing the variables and this is the main loop right here. So there's some things I might want to add into the main loop here. Um, I'm going to actually put a little comment here so it makes it easier to follow what different ones of these commands are. So this is the move command and this one is the talk command. So it makes it easier if I'm referring back to it later on. Um, as opposed to having to look for 
the, the over here I can just see what command it is here radio um, and this is the fight command with our comments always make sure you've got a space between the hashtag and the um, first word or oh, the first letter Oop. Um, you don't have to, it's not syntactically a problem, it's just a stylistic thing that, that is generally the idea of making um, nice and readable code. Um, so that's our backpack section here. And that's my help and my, finally, my quit. And then this is just for fixing up incorrect command. Okay, so that's all of that in here. That's now easy to follow what's actually happening. Come back over into my room here. And what I do like to do to make sure that I've done is I need to make sure that each one of my little methods and functions actually has a description explaining what it does. So this one initializes the room. This one displays a description of the room. Yep, that's to explain each one of those for room. That's good. Let's go into character. I have initializing the character. I'm sending it. Um, yep, initializing, initializing initializing oh i haven't got one here so i'm going to come in here and just say that one is going to be quite simply um well it's it's kind of explains itself by the by the um by the name of it but returns the value of um if it returns the number of enemies left or present okay and get rid of that extra space there right so now i've got that in here let's just check an item have we got the same in item yep i've explained what that does explain what that does so I come back here and go save right so the last thing i want to tidy up is a little bit of the white space so we just check and a little bit of the white space here and the beautiful thing about python is it doesn't matter how many lines you've got in between different things so you can use it to actually distinguish stuff quite well so you can see how i've grouped my stuff here by putting the white spaces in so i can see that nigel and you did a group, group together and i can see this is the cheese in the chair and i've just worked through that there this one i'm pretty happy with you know i don't think there's a need to put any spaces in between the elifs they kind of the indentation works out quite clearly what they are the correct command and i've got a space here between the end of my while loop and outside of it so in here, in room, generally what I like to do is to have a space between each um, method. So I've got one single line space between those. Um, in character, again, I've got one, I've got two here, so I'm gonna get rid of that just to be consistent. Um, but what I do wanna do is, because character has a number of different classes, the character script has a number of different classes, and between each class, I wanna have two spaces. So I've got two spaces between character and friend and two spaces between friend and an enemy and i get rid of that extra space between those two there number of enemy that's there that's fine it's only got one space i'm going to save that under item here get rid of that extra space there not needed that's all good so all my white space is looking good so that's it we have now finished we've tidied up so it is ease easier for the player to play and follow the instructions and it's also been tidied a bit so it's easier for the coder whether it be yourself in five months time or some other person who decides they want to take this on um it's easy for them to follow what is actually been happening and what you were thinking when you actually programmed it. So I hope that you've um, developed a bit of understanding of object oriented programming through doing this. Um, this is just scratching the surface, just the very beginning of it, but hopefully it will give you enough to be able to start exploring some of the more detailed aspects of it. So um, enjoy, um, enjoy playing your game and best of luck into the future.